Hi class, uh, we're going to pick up uh, starting in tutorial to looking at building a database and defining table relationships. Uh, and in section 2.1, we're going to look at the guidelines for designing databases and setting field properties. We're going to create a database and design view. If you remember from before, basically we were in data sheet view. Uh, we will define fields, set field properties, and specify a table's primary key. We'll modify the structure of a table. We'll change the order of fields in design view. We will add fields in design view. We'll also change the format property for a field in data sheet view, and we'll modify field properties in design view. Okay. Again, basically what we are going to do is uh, Chatham is going to continue to build upon itself. So when we created that in tutorial 1.1, we used it in 1.2, and we will continue to use it as we go through the four chapters for access. Okay, so um, again, we are currently on uh, the backstage view. We're going to select the Chatham database by double clicking. Okay, from tutorial 1.2, we added the uh, visit list, we added the visit data form, and we also looked at the visit um, details as far as a report. We did those under create, so basically we created um, uh, using the query wizard, a specific query, we looked at creating a simple form and also a simple report. Okay, so if you look on page 54 in your textbook, it gives you some information basically on the guidelines for designing a database. Uh, you really truly, truly need to understand what it is you need in order to create your database. You need to identify all the fields needed to produce the required uh, information. So in figure 2.1 in your textbook, um, Cindy has the data requirements, so of course uh, we have it all listed here, name, address, zip code, invoice, uh, email, all those specific things. So basically you need to identify that information that you're going to need first before you can even start the process of creating your database. You need to organize each piece of data into its smallest useful part. You need to group related fields into tables, okay, and in figure 2.2. Uh, Basically, you can see what they did was take the information from the data requirements and then identify what kinds of tables they will create. So they have a visit table that has the visit ID, patient ID, visit date, reason, and walk-in, and then your billing table, which has your invoice, visit ID, um, invoice date, amount, and paid, invoice paid. And you can see from your figure there all the other, the other patient table. On TC5, it also talks about determining each table's primary key. Again, if you remember, it has to be a unique identifier. Um, you can't have uh, your primary key um, should not be used more than once. So it specifically identifies that your banner ID, ID identifies you as that individual on campus. It has to be specific only to that specific user or group. Uh, you also have to include common fields in your related tables. You need to avoid redundancy, and at the bottom in figure 2-3, it kind of goes over some examples of redundancy. Um, so in your visit table uh, and your patient table, so your patient table basically has your name, address, and your patient ID. In the visit table, there's really no point in having the last name because your visit ID, which is a primary key, and the visit table is a foreign key in your visit table. So really you don't need the last name, that information or it's already captured in another table. And then you also need to determine the properties of each field and we'll kind of go through those um, as we move forward. Uh, next it talks about the guidelines for setting field properties, uh, naming fields and objects, assigning field data types. And on page 57 it goes through the specific data types uh, and again, here um, in your home ribbon, um, let's go back to create. So if we wanted to add a table, if you remember, we had the uh, short text, number. So these are specific uh, fuel types, uh, and they have specific data types associated with those, okay? Um, so on your page, you can see you have short text, uh, and basically over to the very uh, right of that table, it tells you the specific fuel size. Um, so if I open up the visit table, just to show you an example, okay, and again, this is your contextual tab here at the very top, you can select fuels. So here on this specific fuel, 
we can see it's identified as a short text, and our field size is 255. And if you look at your textbook on page 57, it can be 0 to 255, so 255 is the limit, okay? Um, and it also goes into more detail about some of the other ones, so for currency, auto number, is, um, the field size of the max is nine digits, things of that nature. Um, so at the bottom, the field size property defines a field's values maximum storage for short text number and auto number fields. And again, um, by default, it is set to 255, which is the maximum for short text. Um, you can also set the captioning property, so kind of like a display name. So as I've talked about, when you create specific fields, they can't have spaces in it. That is because of using different types of databases. So if you took the information out of Access and tried to put it into an SQL database, um, it wouldn't accept anything that had a space in it. So to be consistent across different platforms, um, your field names can't. But now you can change the caption, and we'll go through that as well. All right, so um, on page 59, we're going to be creating a table in design view. So basically, we'll be able to specifically identify and make changes, um, create the actual table based on what we want to have uh, as far as specific values. Okay, I'm going to close the visit table. So um, at the bottom or middle of the page 59, we're going to select the Create tab or uh, ribbon. And from there, we want to select Table Design. So previously, we just selected Table. That took us into data sheet view, so we're going to select Table Design. All right, so it looks a little different. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to define the names listed here. We're going to specify the specific type, any type of description that we need. And then as we type in this information, we have additional things here at the bottom for the specific properties that uh, we can change. So on page 60, uh, what we want to do is we're going to type in invoice num. Again, no spaces. Once we tab over, you can see that by default, the first one is short text, and it gives us a variety of field properties here at the bottom. But we want to look at that. We're going to leave it for short text. All right, so we're going to select the tab key to select short text uh, for what we want. And then over on page 61, we're going to type in primary key. Now, in design view, us typing in primary key does not make this a primary key. That is only a description. So there will be another step to make this a primary key. But just keep in mind, if you type anything over in this area on description, that's all it is. It is a description. It does not um, change or modify the specific field that you're working on. Okay? All right, so next what we want to do is actually look at um, the specific field properties. So down here under field properties at the bottom, we're going to double click where it says field size and we're going to change that to a size. So we're going to limit the number of characters in that specific cell to five or that field. All right, for caption, and you can tab down, or you can take your mouse and click in that specific area. Now we're going to type in invoice and then space known. This is the only place that you can have spaces, okay? This is kind of like a display name. So if you had something typed and you put your mouse over it and it kind of shows what you want, it's only a display name. The seal name has not changed. This is only a display name. All right, so next we're going to go back up. Our next uh, field is going to be visit ID. No spaces again. We're going to tab over. All right, we're going to leave short text. We're going to tab over again. And here we're going to tap in foreign key. Okay. Now in step four on page 62, they're introducing uh, kind of a shortcut key. So from here, if you use on your keyboard F6, it will take you down to the first value or first property in your field property. Okay, again, all I did was from being here where I typed in foreign key, used uh, the shortcut key F6, and it took us down to our field properties. From here, we're going to change our 255 and we land it to 4. 
All right, we're going to tab down until we get to caption, and we're going to type in visit space ID. Okay. Next, we're going to go back up, and we're going to uh, type in invoice amount. Going to tab over, and from here, we're actually going to change the data type. We will not be using short text. We're going to select the drop-down arrow, and we're going to select currency. Okay. Now, you can see when I select the currency, you have a different set of field properties based on whatever data type you're selecting. Okay. So from there, we are going to select F6. All right. We're going to make sure it's on currency. We're going to tab down. And for decimal places, we need to change that to 2. Now, what you can see here is it's on auto. But if you go all the way over to the right, there's a drop-down arrow, and you can select the number of decimal points you want. All right, then we're going to tab down to caption and type in invoice amount. And um, in the textbook, they're kind of abbreviating amount to AMT. Next, on the fourth row for our field name, we're going to type in invoice date. Okay, um, so the next one, what it's suggesting is it's currently on short text. If you type in the letter D, there, of course, is an autocomplete, so that's what they're trying to show you. So you can always take your drop-down arrow and do that, or you can start typing the letter that you want based on the type uh, data type you want. And we're going to select tab to move over. All right, from there... Uh, what we're going to do um, is we're going to press F6 to take us down to our field properties. Okay, from there under format. Okay, so here under our field properties, we're on format. Over to your right, there's a drop-down arrow. From here, we're going to specifically select the way we want our date to be displayed. So we're going to select month, date, and year. Okay. So that would be short date. Okay. From there, we're going to tab down to caption. Sorry, I went down too far. And we're going to type in invoice, space, date. Okay. Uh, and let me go back up. I think I selected the wrong one for format, so give me one second. I don't actually see the mm slash dd slash yyy, but this would represent the same, so we're going to select that because I don't see it based on my specific version. Okay, next we're going to, in our fifth row, we're going to type in invoice paid. Make sure no spaces. Okay, we're going to start typing in a Y. And for invoice paid, this is going to be a yes, no response. So we're going to tab over. From here, we're going to select F6. All right, so we want it to be yes, no as far as our format. Again, there is a drop-down menu, and based on that specific fuel or data type, you can do true or false, uh, yes, no, or on or off. We're going to leave it yes, no. And then for our caption, we're going to type in invoice paid. All right, so next what we're going to do is actually specify the primary key. Um, if you remember, remember what I said earlier, just because we typed it in the description does not make that uh, the primary key. So what we're going to do is we need to select the invoice num, so just by putting your mouse here and clicking it. From here, under the contextual tab that displays, we're going to select primary key. And you can see that when you do that, there's actually a little key that's placed beside that specific fuel value. So that makes it the primary key. All right, so we're going to actually save this. So here, under our click Access Toolbar, we're going to select Save, and now it's going to ask us to save our table, and we're going to call it Billing. Okay, select OK. 
All right, so we're going to modify the structure um, of the access table. So what we want to do is we're going to select a specific uh, fill value that we have here, and we're going to move it. So basically, once you add these in in the design view, you can change the location or where they actually are um, in your table. Okay? So on invoice amount right here. Okay, so we're going to select it. Once we select it and we put our mouse over, it should have a pointer. What we're going to do is we're going to actually move it below invoice paid. Okay, so now you should have invoice num, visit ID, invoice date. And let's make sure I have that correct. So, yeah, we moved it down. So, we're correct. So, invoice paid and invoice amount. Okay? So, on page 70, um, it tells us that it wants us to insert a specific row. So, here, if you right-click, you can do insert row. And then we're going to type in invoice item. Okay, we tabbed over. We're going to use short text, and then we're going to press F6 to go down to our fill values. We're going to change our fill size to 40, and then our caption amount is going to be, our, our caption is going to be invoice, and then space item. Okay, and then we're going to select save. So what I did there was I think I put the invoice amount in the wrong place. So we should have it in a specific order, as you can see here. But basically, you can highlight any specific one with your pointer, move and drag that to whatever location you want. You can select a specific record and either insert a row or delete a row. Okay? So it gives you a variety of options. Next, we're going to look at, so we're going to close this. So now you can see that we have two tables. We have billing and visit. So next we're going to look at modifying fuel values uh, from the data sheet view. Okay? So we're going to double click and open visit. This is the one we created previously. Okay, so we can close our navigation pane. All right, here, so since we're currently in data sheet view, our contextual tab is available. We have uh, under table tools, we have fields and tables, so we're going to select fields. All right, so for the visit date, we're going to select that column. And then what we want to do is we're going to select short date, okay? So here under the formatting group, we have date and time for the data type, and then here we can select the specific format. You will want to select short date, okay? So if I go back in, so you can see that it changed here, okay? Next, we're going to look at changing properties in design view. So we're going to modify the fill size, the description, and caption fields uh, properties. So what we're going to do is specifically in the visit table that we initially created ourselves, um, in order to get into, so if you're in data sheet view, we have all this information. Here to your left, you can select the specific view. We're in data sheet view, so it always displays the view that you're not currently in. So this is data sheet view. So you can select this, or you can select the drop down arrow, and you can see that it's the same icon. So we're just going to select here to change it to um, design view. All right, so from here, um, basically, what we want to look at, okay, it says that in the group field, we're going to click view. We've already done that. Uh, the table is displayed in design view. Uh, you need to enter the description, property value for the field, the primary key, and so forth. So we're going to press the tab key uh, until the insertion point and then type in primary key. Okay. So from here, we're going to select tab until we're over in the description. We're going to type in primary key. Now, one thing to note, um, when we created the actual table in design view, we had to specify the primary key. 
when we create in data sheet view, the first um, field is always the primary key. So it already has that icon there that indicates that that's the primary key. Next, uh, we're going to select F6. It will take us down to our properties. We're going to change this to 4. One thing to keep in mind, if you already have data in a specific data sheet view, and you go in and change the design view, if there are more than four characters in that specific field, it will cut it off from the end. So make sure that you know what you're doing before you start changing the different sizes, okay? All right, we're going to tab down, and we're going to type in, in the caption visit ID. All right, next we're going to look at patient ID. We're going to type in foreign key. We're going to press F6. We're going to change our field size to 5. Okay, we're going to tab down to get to caption. We're going to type in patient ID. All right, next we're going to go back up to visit date. From here, all we need to do is actually press F6. Uh, we're going to type in our caption, and we're going to put date of visit. All right next, we're going to select uh, reason. We're going to select F6. We're going to change our field size to 60, and then tab down to caption and type in reason, slash, Diagnosis. All right, and then for our walk-in, again, we're going to press F6. We're going to leave yes, no, and then we're going to type in our caption, walk-in, with a question mark. All right, so we're going to save. Now, as I mentioned before, because there was data currently in the data sheet view, it will prompt you to make sure, because um, we changed the original one, the visit ID from 255 characters to uh, 5. Are you sure? So we're going to select yes. Okay. So if we go back here, this is the data sheet view. You can select it. Um, and as you click on different ones, if we go back under the contextual tab for uh, fields, um, you can see that we changed the field size to 4. Um, specifically here, we changed it to 5 at short text. Okay? We changed this to date along with um, short date. Here, we changed it to short text with 60 um, characters. So you can see where we made those changes. Okay, we'll save our work and start in tutorial 2.2. Thanks.